So, uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, depending upon where you are in the world. And welcome to this webinar on market sentiment. As you can see, I'm Martin Essex, an analyst here at Daily FX. Um, if you've not been, been here before, I can tell you I've worked as a financial journalist, I've worked as an economist, and I'm also a qualified technical analyst. So, as you'd expect from that, I trade by mixing technical and fundamental analysis. I also look at geopolitics and, of course, given this, <laughs> given the subject of this uh, webinar uh, on market sentiment. And these are my personal views. And before we go on any further, I have to show you a disclaimer. So if you wouldn't mind reading that, I'd be grateful. Thank you very much. And let's look at some charts. So as you probably know, what I do normally is um, I go through the charts, then I have a look at what's coming up on the calendar this week, and go into the IG client sentiment data and all sorts of other things on the way. Now, rather interesting, I've got a, a, someone from Melbourne in Australia has said, good evening, sound and video all okay. And I've also got somebody who doesn't say where they're from who says the sound is terrible. You can this webinar from a phone booth. So I'd like to know, please, if the rest of you can hear me okay or if it sounds like I'm from a phone booth. Anyway, I will, for the meantime, continue. Well, obviously, at the moment, it's all about uh, vaccines uh, against the coronavirus. And last Monday, we had the announcement from Pfizer. Um, this Monday, we had the announcement um, from Moderna of another possible vaccine. And last Monday, everything went flying high um, on hopes that the vaccine will at least be the light at the end of the tunnel for the uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. This Monday, the second one, the Moderna one, there was much less of a reaction, but still, um, well, it does look okay. Gosh, another person has told me that my voice is distorted. I do beg your pardon for that. I will um, try and get a bit closer. Maybe my headphones aren't working. Anyway, okay. I hope you can hear me well enough to listen. So, as I was saying, the vaccine news last Monday had a big, uh, sorry, big increase in, uh, big improvement in the sentiment. The uh, one this Monday had rather less impact. And anyway, currencies haven't really reacted all that strongly. So you can see here that this is the dollar basket. So this is the dollar against the basket of other currencies. And you can see here, I think, that, um, well, the dollar has gone down a bit, as you would have expected, because the dollar is seen as the safe haven. So if uh, markets improve, um, everybody's telling me they can't really very well. I do apologize for that. Um, see if that's any better. Anyway, dollar's been going down because the dollar's a safe haven, and as with sentiment improves, people say to sell the dollar. Um, and it is in that little sort of downward um, uh, movement there. Um, I'll go on to an hourly chart, which perhaps will show it better than this daily chart. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So that's the dollar falling. Um, but it is interesting that currencies, I think, have been affected far less than have um, the stock markets in particular. Um, I will run through these first. Uh, no, I won't. I'll run through the stock markets first because they're more interesting. Excuse me while I have a cough. Sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to go on to the um, stock markets first because that's where the real interesting thing. So this is the S&P 500, the broad stock market in uh, broad stock market index, and it's flat. It's at an all-time high. It's really moved very strongly high, um, over the course of the last uh, week and a bit, and, and the, as you can see before that. But anyway, a lot of money going into the stock markets, hopes that these two vaccines, the one from Pfizer and the one from Moderna, will really make a difference, will really bring this pandemic to an end. Let's so hope that's true. So that's the S&P 500, and um, it's in Wall Street as well. This is the Dow Jones Industrial. The same again, very, very strong. Quite probably, well, hopefully, nice at the end of the tunnel. Now, let's have a look at the FTSE 100 in London, because this is a bit different. Um, it's going up. Um, oh, sorry about that. 
Um, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Sorry, that wasn't meant to happen. Right, there we go. Um, back on the dollar basket for whatever reason. Sorry, my computer's just been a bit strange. Um, what the is that on the other? Ah, there we go. Right, sorry about that. Um, the FTSE 100 is full of value stocks. Um, so value stocks um, are those that have suffered most from the pandemic. And by that, I mean the likes of airlines, travel companies, energy stocks, bank stocks. They've all suffered the most from, like in the UK, the lockdowns. Um, and people are now moving back into value stocks away from the momentum stocks that have performed really well um, during the pandemic. So in other words, the stocks that have benefited from the pandemic. And you think quite obviously about uh, the likes of um, uh, Amazon because of increased home deliveries. You think of um, Netflix because of people watching at home and so on and so on. Um, I've been asked again if I could use another microphone. Let me just have a go and see if I can just change this and see if it will possibly help. So these headphones, it says, are on. Um, let's go for the, oh, it says there, hmm. Uh, I don't know that I can do anything better than I'm doing at the moment. Uh, because it to be working. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm afraid you're going to, I can't see any way of changing that, so I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with this and I'll try and sort it out the next week in the meantime, sorry about that. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Yes, so value stocks in the FTSE 100, definitely they've um, uh, benefited uh, from this flow of money caused by the, um, the announcement of these vaccines. And the same is true, although to a bit of a lesser extent throughout Europe. So you've got here is the fact aren't. Germany, the DAX, uh, what else do I show you? Spain, Italy, pretty much the same story. But so in other words, the indexes that have been battered most um, have uh, benefited most. And that's why even though Wall Street, both the Dow Jones Industrials and the S&P 500 are at record highs, um, nonetheless, we've seen an even stronger move upwards in um, Europe. And I suspect that we will see a continuing rotation as well. Rotation means move from momentum stocks into value stocks in this case. So even though we've seen stock markets looking pretty strong, it does seem to me like the start of um, a, a larger move into larger rotation. And um, that's why I'm really quite optimistic about stocks at the moment. Um, I'll go back quickly to uh, the currency markets, as I said I would. and. Um, see what's going on in the individual currencies. So as I said, this is the um, dollar basket. And you can see on this hourly chart very much how it's gone down. The big contrast is with currencies like the New Zealand dollar, which you can see here, which is going up really quite strongly, and the Australian dollar, which has also been going up quite strongly. Now, the difference, though, between the two is that in New Zealand, we're not likely to see any more rate cuts. Whereas in Australia, it's possible that there will be more um, reserve bank stimulus. So um, in other words, of the two, well, it's interesting that they're moving pretty much in tandem at the moment um, when the outlook is so different. But then that's more of a strong sentiment that we're seeing in the markets at the moment. Uh, so that's uh, the Aussie, what else can I show you? The Euro, of course, benefiting along with um, the other risky currencies, but still right in the middle of this broad range here. So 120, roughly to 116, roughly. We're right in the middle of that 19 and a bit. So um, it is creeping higher, but not as strongly as many of the other currencies. Uh, I show sure you dollar yen. Um, so there's very big movement that we saw here. Um, that was last uh, Monday. Month, and then seems to be a little bit higher, but then it's come right back down again. So um, that's, I think, interesting. Uh, what other currencies can I show you? Um, dollar Swiss, so green dollar coming off a bit. But pretty much everywhere you look, the dollar is coming off a bit. Um, sterling, um, 
well, very much, uh, as I wrote this morning on our website, if you'd like to read it, uh, very much depends on the Brexit headlines. So um, uh, the talks are continuing this week, um, of, of the UK EU talks on their um, post Brexit relationships and their relationship from the beginning of next year. And we get so many conflicting reports out of this. It talks going well, it talks going badly, it talks going well, it talks going badly. And that's buffeting Sterling and is almost certain to continue to. And um, I think that's actually, you know, one of, I think it's difficult to trade really with these headlines. We never quite know what's going to happen next. And, and so I think for me anyway, that's at least uh, uh, a, 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 a one to avoid. Um, let me just have a quick check that there aren't too many questions that I've missed. Because I do want the first questions if you'd like to, apart from everybody saying how badly my Macro uh, my is working. So I go up. Sorry about that. Um, there's a question here from Ashok. Is the ECB likely to allow the euro to move beyond 120? Doesn't it destroy, destroy their export competitiveness? Um, well, I, that's, essential. that's partly why I've got that line drawn at 120 there, because although it's the recent high, I think it is also a level that the ECB certainly wants to defend. Is it going to intervene directly in the markets? I think almost certainly not, but we are going to see very soon uh, another package of measures from the ECB. And I think that's the way I think. I don't see any direct foreign policy intervention, but I do see um, monetary policy being adjusted to try and make sure that doesn't happen. Right, where should we go next? Let's go to commodities next. Um, and there's some interesting movements here. This is oil. Now, oil is obviously going up um, for the same reason as uh, stock markets going up, because uh, economic recovery would mean um, more demand for oil, theoretically. But also um, OPEC plus, which is OPEC plus countries like Russia that are not in OPEC, um, it, they're going to be meeting, and it looks as though they will prolong production cuts. So I think the way it works is that first of all there's a committee meeting, and then there's a full ministerial meeting, and if they decide that. Um, that they're going to keep production low, which that's another positive sign for oil looking ahead. Um, the other one, this is a US contract, by the way, I'll just very quickly show you the Brent contract, which looks very nice to say, we do pretty much what we've been telling you. Um, I'll show you gold as well, which is almost completely flat now. Um, it did move a bit on the vaccine hopes, but not very much, and it's certainly not. Um, certainly not really moving in the way you would expect it to. Now, I'm quite confused about that, I, mean, I have to admit this. Is it a safe haven anymore? I would say no, it's not. Is it a riskier asset? No, probably not. So it's pretty much moving on its own. And I think that's something to be wary of, sort of trading goal on general market moves. And um, uh, I think it's gold specifics. Thing, pretty much. The other thing I, I'm not going to show you at the moment, but bond yields. Bond yields. So the yields on the top quality sovereign bonds, and by that I mean US treasuries, um, German bonds, and so on, um, yields are going up. In other words, prices down because people are moving away from those top quality sovereign bonds into more risky assets. Um, what else can I tell you? US retail sales, the next thing coming up today. Brexit talks I've already talked about. Um, the two sides, incidentally, on Brexit do still seem far apart. Um, and yet there's also talk that next week could see a deal. So that explains, I think, why UK assets uh, generally are, um, are, are likely to be very volatile. Um, I've mentioned the FTSE as well. Um, on the dollar, just a couple of other notes. Um, and I'll call the dollar up while I'm talking about it. Um, this is the dollar basket. Um, the COVID restrictions are increasing in some US states, I believe. And there are also worries about a smooth transition between um, President Trump and President Biden. 
So I think that's another factor to bear in mind when we're looking at the dollar, not just as the ultimate safe haven, but also slightly perhaps uh, domestic politics a factor there as well. Um, I've mentioned sterling. Um, I think the only thing to bear in mind really in this is that currencies have um, not responded very strongly to all this virus. Uh, the, the, the news vaccine news, and it's been much more concentrated in the stock market. So I will show you that and I haven't shown you yet um, Bitcoin, because I think that's again really quite interesting. And look, um, I, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin personally, um, but you can't really argue with that on the daily chart that it's gone up from some eleven thousand dollars for Bitcoin to uh, going on for seventeen thousand now. So it's been a very steep move higher after that the previous volatility that we saw. I think I'll move on to the calendar now and go on to our website. And here where it says calendar is economic calendar. And I'll talk you through what's coming up this week in the way of um, uh, sentiment indicators. I think let's take a look at my um, uh, questions first. Um, are you aware of a good way to measure cryptocurrency sentiment? I remember a while ago I found it. Um, the answer to that is quite simply no. I'm afraid I don't. I don't know where you look for Bitcoin sentiment. Um, the obvious answer in the price. Um, I think that Bitcoin is difficult to play because it's different. You get different prices on different exchanges, so it's not sort of a one big strong market the way so many of the others are. Um, so I'm not afraid I can't answer that. Um, what else? Uh, any thoughts on dollar weakness? Is this more to do with the vaccine hoax or more to, on the uncertainty on the US election final result? I think I've actually answered that already. Um, I think it is partly to do with the vaccine hoax. I think it is much more at the moment to do with the vaccine hoax. But I've just mentioned also, uncertainty. there's not uncertainty about the US election final result. I mean, I think we know that Biden has won. It's more a matter of because there's been no smooth transition, um, it's difficult to see or for, for the federal government to take any action on coronavirus. Um, and also, as I said, that um, the, the I think there's a worry about this this um, handover more generally. So I think that is very much affecting uh, the, um, the dollar at the moment. Anyway, I said I would go next to um, the uh, sentiment indicators on the calendar. So what I like to look at is the forward-looking indicators um, because I think they provide you with a more up-to-date picture of what's going on than do the um, the more the, the, the generally looked at uh, official figures. So yesterday, starting with yesterday, um, there was only one thing that I thought was kind of interesting, and that was um, the uh, New York Empire State Manufacturing Index. Um, this is not a market move, but it says here it's a low impact figure. But look at the actual figure, and never mind the, the, the level of it, it's the change that matters. Um, Actual 6.3, forecast 12.75, previous 10.5. So what we're seeing here is um, we've actually expected, or rather the economists who are told by the news agencies were expected an increase, and actually there was a decrease. So um, it does look as though um, the American economy is conceivably not growing, not recovering as well as was previously expected. So I think that's very important. Um, let's have a look at the next seven days. I can say, I tell you, it's a very quiet day for a very quiet week for sentiment indexes. But there are a couple more um, from the US on um, Thursday, which is the, the 19th. There we go. Um, so we have, um, as I said, two more figures. There's the uh, Philadelphia Fed manufacturing index. This is a closely watched one and worth it for keeping an eye on. Um, expected to be low. And that would fit in with what we saw from the Empire State figure. And um, also we've got one more Federal Reserve reporting, Federal Reserve Bank reporting. This is the Kansas Fed's manufacturing index, not one that tends to move the markets in the same way as the Philly Fed does. 
Now let's move on to Friday. And um, we've got, uh, first of all, this one's struck me, United Kingdom GFK consumer confidence figure. Um, consumer confidence is all important when you're looking at stock markets and, and of course the economy more generally. And as you can see, it's expected to worsen from minus 31 in October to minus 34 in November. And I think that sounds about right to me. I don't think that's very far out. Um, then we're moving on a little bit. We've got the purchasing managers indexes from Japan for November. So the flash composite manufacturing and services. It's always with these PMIs, it's always the manufacturing one that um, is perhaps worth paying most attention to. Uh, not because manufacturing is, is necessarily a huge part of the economy, but more because um, GDP tends to follow the manufacturing sector. So expecting a rise here wouldn't surprise me if in, in manufacturing. It wouldn't surprise me if there was a fall given what we've seen so far, but who knows. Um, and then just one final figure. Um, I haven't mentioned the Eurozone yet. But we do have a Eurozone consumer confidence coming up. Um, on Friday, flash um, figure for November expecting to worsen, which wouldn't surprise me. Um, so that's about um, it on the uh, calendar. Which time have I got to continue to that? Um, let me move on to the IG client sentiment data. So uh, if you again go on to our website and look at um, trading strategies and to sentiment. Um, I'll explain this if you're new to this. Um, JDFX is part of IG. IG has platforms that enable retail traders to trade. And we look at the positioning of those traders, and whether they're long or short, and whether they are more long than, or more short than the day ago and the week ago. So I find this quite useful. And we take a contrarian view of those traders. So in other words, if uh, if people are long and going longer, then we think that the market, the, the price will probably go down. And this is not betting against the company's customers or anything. It's just uh, saying that that tends to be an indicator. And excuse me, I'm going to have another coffee. Um, and right. So um, let's see what these signals are. And you can also find them on top of the page, by the way, here, along here, where it's top of the dollar oil and Wall Street and so on. But more detail here. You can see a quick uh, view in real time of whether people are long or short and whether they're getting longer or shorter. However, the one I prefer is this one here where it says full IG client sentiment report because although it's not live, it gives you a lot more information. So, what I'm going to do now is show you this bar chart, which will be very interesting. Always, most people are long of cryptocurrencies here at the top. Ripple, Ethereum, so Litecoin, Bitcoin, gold, and so on. So that's what the assets that people are long of, and the ones they're short of, uh, in particular the Kiwi dollar, but also Wall Street, Euro dollar, Aussie dollar, and so on. This one below it here gives you an even better view of what's moving. And you can see some very sharp moves here. This one is dollar can, this one is French stocks, and this one is swelling yen. Look at that increase in yens. And then so you can go further down and you can get more information about all these. So, for example, um, GDP, JP1, which I was just looking at, bearish signal there from that. I'll actually look at that in more detail. So, let me do a quick find on this page. So, what it's telling us. Hmm. Oh, what's gone wrong? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to find it by hand because this doesn't seem to want to uh, find it for me. I wonder if that's really not must be here somewhere. Okay, talk amongst yourselves while I'm finding this. Right, let me take another go at this here. Into GP3, baby, while maybe it's the Actually, that might be uh, That's why he's doing well. Okay. Again, there we go. Right. Sterling yen client positioning. 
So you can see here the blue and the red is long positions and short positions, and the green and red line here are the, 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 um, the price. And you can see here, I think, a very steep increase recently in long positions. I mean, but it says retail trader data shows 60 odd percent of traders in that long, with the ratio of traders long to short at roughly one and a half to one. Now, these are the big figures. The number of traders net long is 44% higher than yesterday, 96% higher than last week. So a load of traders are going net long, um, sterling yen. The figures are they're already uh, net long, um, but they're beginning to go more net long. As I said before, we typically take a contrary view to credit sentiment. And the fact traders are net long suggests sterling yen prices may fall. Traders are further net long than yesterday and last week, and the combination of current sentiment and recent changes gives us a stronger sterling yen, bearish, and fairer trading bias. So I do think that one's interesting. Um, and I will, I don't think I'll go to any more of those. Feel free to look them up for some the trading strategies and then sentiment on our website, which is very effective. And one other thing I'd like to show you at this time is the um, Fear and Greed Index produced by CNN Business. So this gives us a good indication of market sentiment as opposed to consumer confidence or business confidence or whatever. What emotion is driving the market now? It tracks, as it says down here, seven indicators in investor sentiment. Down here in the red means that risk is off. Up here in the green means that risk is on. Current figure 69. So you can see what that means is that uh, there's definitely a sort of feel good factor in the markets at the moment, which is why they're continuing to move into stocks. Um, previous close 59, we could go neutral. So this has been a very steep improvement in market sentiment caused by those two vaccine announcements. Um, and I think, as I said right at the start, I think this will continue for a while yet. And certainly, I think that a move into uh, value stocks from momentum stocks is a good idea. Um, I'll give you investment advice, of course, because um, I'm not qualified to do so. But it's certainly, in my opinion, for me, that is what is likely to, to happen over the next few days. Um, and I think that's about it for me, except to say, as I always say, please have a look at our education section. It's up here. And um, uh, there's lots and lots of stuff to look at now, lots of information, um, especially if you're beginning uh, as a flight trader, please read up what to do because uh, otherwise you will you know, certainly lose money and we wouldn't be able to do that. So anyway, have a look at our education section. It's very useful. Um, thank you very much for listening. My apologies again that the sound wasn't very good. I'll see if I can get that uh, fixed for next week. Uh, in the meantime, um, have, a good, uh, have a good week.